Wait, should we start first? Like, welcome. Okay, I'm just using the same colors that we used last week from the sunset with an addition of a little bit of daffodil yellow. But the other colors are moss rose, sunshine yellow, sunrise pink, Norway blue, and black. So I'm actually, it's the same palettes from last week. I didn't clean them. Because it's. So I'm going to be straight with you right now. I'm with you right now. It's the same colors. And. Oh, um, there's a run on it now. It's fine. It's fine. And then, because um, you can bring those colors up after they dry. So I leave them if I can. All right. All right. We're here. We are here. We're ready to go. Welcome, everybody, to Let's Make Art. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, where's the excitement? We're talking about the hey, oh. We paint. We, because we like to watercolor. Because we like to have fun. This is what we're doing tonight. We are doing some postcards here. So I'm doing two. I'm going to show you guys how to do both of these tonight. And um, if you have your subscription box, there should be a postcard in there that's pre-stamped and pre-addressed for the Wood family. Um, that's where they're going to. And it's just a continuation off last week, pretty much the mountains. It's just like a slight variation from it. So the Wood family, I believe, is from South Carolina. They were nominated by Billy, who's one of our viewers. And um, they're just this really wonderful family. Um, they were missionaries in Mexico. And then the dad, Greg, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And so um, they had to go back home to the United States. And then in December of last year, he passed away from that. And so um, it's been a few months, but Billy just said something when she nominated them that really resonated with me. And she said, you know, when people are going through a really hard time, like they're surrounded by support. But then after that family member passes, you know, sometimes we're there at the beginning and then we kind of like leave them alone, even though they're still in a lot of pain. And so we just want to make sure that that the Wood family knows that even though it's been a little bit of time, we're still thinking about them, we still love them, and um, we're just hoping that we can, you know, make their day a little bit brighter with these postcards and know that we're thinking about them. Yes? Yeah. All right. So. Billy says North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. I was close. <laughs> okay, so um, we're just, since we're just using like, the same idea as last project. I have the same palettes going on here. I didn't clean them because I don't know if you guys know this, but these paints, you can bring them back after they dry. So a lot of times with these palettes, I'll put my paints out, I let them dry, I come back to them the next day and I just add some water to them and bring them right back up. So they're pretty cool. Um, so that's why they're there. I did grab a little bit of daffodil yellow for this one. So you have that in a couple other year of your weeks if you want to grab that. Or you can just stick with the sunshine yellow and you're fine. And then the reason why I chose the sky for this project is because um, uh, uh, the mom, Missy, the wife, she has a blog where she kind of just talks about her process of healing. She talks about her husband and their family and all of these things. And in one of the posts that I was reading, she was talking about seasons and she was saying that spring was Greg's favorite season because he loves trees. He loves making things grow. And sorry, I thought I was going to say something. And he just like loves that whole thing. And so it just kind of reminds me like the tree and the foliage and the mountains and the outside just kind of gives me that feeling of um, life and, you know, growth and what's the word I'm looking for? Foliage, <laughs> you know, I've been looking for that word. For <laughs> hey, Debbie, Debbie's wondering what happened to the elephant. Aren't we supposed to be doing the elephant right now? Debbie, excellent question. So if you've noticed in some months, there are actually five Tuesdays instead of four. So when, when that happens, because we only send you with four weekly projects, when we have a uh, extra Tuesday in the month, we kind of use the postcard as one of our Tuesday nights. So the elephant we're painting next Tuesday, actually, which is July 31st, it's the last Tuesday of the month. And um, that is when we're gonna be painting that together. So we're releasing the tutorial for that elephant tomorrow. So you guys will be able to see that video and then we'll all paint it together next Tuesday night. But tonight we're doing our Make Art Matter postcard. And then on the months where there's only four Tuesdays, we still do a little paint sesh for our postcard, but we just do it in the middle of the week, not on a Tuesday night. We go live and do that one. I was under the impression there would be no math here tonight. <laughs> there's, only, there's only slight counting. 
Okay. On days that end with Y <laughs> in September. You guys ready? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you have extra scratch paper, you can use the back of one of the extra scrap papers to do. We're just gonna do a couple little warm ups before we get started. If you, you can even use regular paper for this if you are out of paper, but using the back is totally fine. I use the back of papers when I'm warming up all the time if it's like a scratch paper. Okay, so I'm gonna put some colors here on the palette. This is yellow, okay? You pull that palette down a little bit. Just yeah. Yeah. Whoa, too far. And I'm gonna put some moss rose. So basically what you have to remember with skies is that they're pretty much just like a gorgeous, like soft transition of color. Like most of the time there's not like a strong line of where the color changes. And that's what we're going to kind of practice today in our warm up is just that color transition. Give me some black and then we'll be good to go. To go over the colors again, it's just the same ones as the mountains. So there's sunrise pink and sunshine yellow and moss rose and Norway blue and black. And then I grabbed a little bit of daffodil for, for that like nice bright yellow. So for our warm up, I just want you to do a nice color change. So I'm gonna practice from going to yellow to orange to pink. That'll be my first warm up. So I'm gonna grab some daffodil yellow I'm gonna spread it across my paper. Just do a couple inches. Yep. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the moss rose. Are you rinsing between? I did a little rinse in between, yes. And yeah. then I'm going to pull a little yellow off to the side too, so it kind of makes like an orange. And like right where I left off, I'm gonna start this orange. Okay, but you'll see here that there's like a strong line from where those colors meet, right? And that is what we don't want. We want it to blend. So I'm going to rinse my brush and kind of like dry it a little bit so it's just damp. And then I'm just gonna kind of swoosh this orange back into the yellow. So you kind of work back and forth on this area. And the goal is to have and if you need to rinse your brush again and like kind of blend it out a little bit more, feel free to do that. It's not like a magic formula where it's like you only rinse your brush one time. It's just however you need to do it until it feels blended. So now I have a better um, yellow to orange, right? And then we're gonna put some stronger orange in and then I'm gonna put straight moss rose and then kind of blend that back in. Yep, very nice. So if you're looking at this, and oh, sorry that I didn't say this earlier, but you wanna try and work fast when you're blending because if you wait too long, then it's gonna to start to dry on your paper and it's gonna be harder to blend out those lines. So try and work as fast as you can because if you move it quicker, then it doesn't have time to set up and you won't have those lines. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna practice is we're gonna do the same thing, but. I, I want us to practice doing it in a already wet area. So we were just putting that on a dry piece of paper. Now what I want you to do is just grab some water and just do like that same shape, like that long rectangle. And then we're gonna start dropping color in. So uh, I'm just gonna do the same colors, but if you wanna do like a pink to purple to blue instead, feel free to. So I'm gonna put in yellow and you're gonna see when it's wet it's a lot easier to spread out. It's automatically gonna kind of blend out on its own. So I put in my yellow and now I'm dropping in my orange. Kind of blending and then I'll put in my pink. I think the key to being good at this is sitting next to someone who knows how to mix paint. Yeah. yeah. It's my secret. <laughs> You fingered it out. 
So usually when I'm doing um, sky, skyscapes, skies, sure. Um, I tend to want to wet, I try and get the whole sky wet and then I added my color because because when it's already wet, it's just gonna blend out automatically because of this paint. So you can see here that these, like in this top one, I have more harsher lines from where I did the sections. And in this one, we don't have those strong lines. It kind of just blends out. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's backwards of that. You have harsher lines? Can I look, it's uglier for sure. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say that it's uglier. I could say what's happening here is it could just be too much water. And so if you need to lift some stuff out because it gets too heavy, just kind of start to lift it out with a damp brush, just kind of pat it on your paper towel and then blend. I'm so afraid of getting yellow over here. I was, you know, I was... So what you don't want to do is you don't want to like pick up some pink and then bring it over here and try and like swoosh this yellow. You gotta rinse your brush in between there. So the, the, the ones on the opposite side can't touch each other, but with the damp brush, you can go in and start to kind of mix it and bring it across. See? Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. How are you doing over here, Brett? Oh. We didn't do our oath. No, well, it's coming. So. We didn't introduce people. What is going on with me tonight? Okay, we have Bradley here. Say hi. Hi. Give it up for Bradley, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Woo, Bradley! Her family's in town visiting from Virginia. They're only here for tonight, so this worked out perfectly that she could come and paint yeah. with us, so we're super happy to have her. This is my husband, Michael. You might have recognized him from Hello. last Charming week. Well, yes. <laughs> and I'm Sarah Cray. And the Sarah do the deal Cray. The do the deal Cray. <laughs> I don't know. We're just it was good. It was good. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do our oath. You guys, you got to tell me when I forget these. I told you last time and you sauced at me. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> do I get saucy? Okay. Everybody raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be, to be kind, kind to myself. myself. I'm just kidding. I promise not to compare. I promise not to I compare. Promise not to compare. <laughs> and I promise to let loose. I promise to let loose. <laughs> because and these I are promise to let loose. These are <laughs> these are sky paintings. They're you kind of like put it down kind of blend it out and then leave it, right? We're, we're letting, we're letting, we're not being perfectionists. Let, <laughs> let loose in painting, okay? Okay, and then uh, let's practice our trees. Oof. Actually, do you know what? No, we're gonna wait because we have to, we're gonna do that while they're drying, okay? So I'm gonna grab my postcard. And um, so there, I'm gonna do two tonight to show you guys. Basically, they're just like the opposite color change. I'm gonna start with this one. We're gonna go from yellow to orange to pink to purple to a little bit of blue. And then the opposite is on this side. So I'm gonna start with this one. If you would rather do this one, then just wait a few minutes. And um, if you have your postcard, um, these postcards, the watercolor paper is actually pretty good quality, but. Um, if you don't want it to bend a lot while you're painting, you can use painter's tape, just kind of tape it down. Um, if it shouldn't bend that much though. Um, and then I actually am just gonna paint directly on the pad. You can just order a, a whole pad of these if you want, because one side is glued down, so it kind of controls the bending a little bit since one side's glued down. If I'm masking tape the sides of these, Yeah. Will it bleed under or does the masking tape stop it? The masking tape will stop it so it can give you a nice clean edge. I'm gonna do that. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Do you want to paint, uh, tape this one down? If you would want to. It might bend a little bit so if you don't want it to bend then you can go ahead yeah, and okay. tape it down. Tape it. Okay. Debbie thinks my radio DJ voice is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong, Debbie. Debbie. No, no, she is right. <laughs> I like it. So wherever you put the tape, it's gonna leave like a thin white line. So if I were you, I would just do like a little thin white border 
Okay. On the whole thing. Just like a little bit. That is not straight. That is bugging me. Oh, sorry. Yes. Please straighten it out. Okay. Oh, you got all crinkled. It's all right. Here, why don't you do it on a piece of paper? Oh, Michael. Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. No, tape it on a piece of paper underneath, not on the table. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. You are so sweet. I know. Is that too thick? No, I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to tape mine because the glue on the postcard should keep mine straight enough. So what we're going to start with here is we're just going to start with, I'm just using daffodil yellow for this because it's just a nice strong yellow that I love. And I'm going to start by like putting the yellow in first and then I get my paintbrush wet and then I wet like most of the area. I'm sorry, which one are you doing? The first one. Okay. The one so with trees. You can hang out and wait. Okay. So, oh, I need to get more yellow. We just set that one maybe up above your brushes. What? What? The postcard. If you the reference you're doing, just put it on the top of your brushes. Oh, there. That's good too. Okay. Will you pass the tape back real quick? Yes. Okay, I'm going to grab it. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to put my daffodil yellow in at the top here, nice and strong. Just going across the whole top. And then I'm just going to kind of get my brush loaded with water and blend it out and get most of this surface wet. Now I'm not going to get the bottom third wet because that's where my mountain is going to go. So when you're doing this sky, you're kind of like going to pretend that there is a mountain already there. So you just kind of leave an area down at the bottom. Okay. So I put in my yellow and now I'm going to put in a little bit of orange, same in our warm up. Kind of, I'm not going to touch here at the very top because I want this to stay pure yellow. Just kind of a little bit down. I'm going to start putting in my orange and it should kind of bleed out a little bit on its own because it's wet. But to help it blend, I'm just going to take my brush back and forth and go across. And I'm going to kind of keep blending it down. Just like that. And then I'm going to get my moss rose and introduce some pink. So you'll notice that I leave a little bit of space, like instead of putting my moss rose right here, I put it right here because this area, I want it to blend with an orange. I leave that space for that orangey part to blend. So I'm just kind of working my brush back and forth on it so it just blends nice and easy. Just like that. Yep, very nice. No, that's great. And then, and sorry, I'm, I'm moving quickly here because we want this to move fast while it's still wet. And then I took a little bit of my moss rose and I mixed it a little bit with my Norway to make kind of a purple. That's a good purple. It is a good purple. And then I'm just going to kind of introduce it here. Now for my mountains, they're lower on the left hand side. So I'm going to put my sky in that way. And then sometimes you want like a nice strong color, you know what I mean? So it's not perfectly smooth. Should you draw the mountains before you start painting? I didn't draw the mountains for this one because it was just like one hill. You're just going for it. But if you feel more comfortable drawing the mountain in first, so, you were, so it reminds you not to paint that, that's totally fine. If you end up painting the whole thing and don't leave any room for the mountains, it's not the end of the world. You just have to wait for your sky to totally dry and then you can just paint your mountain on top over it. Um, but I'm gonna drop in a little bit of moss rose here because I want kind of like a strong color. Is this the purple? Yes. Oh gosh, thank you. Do you think they got the name Moss Rose? That's kind of a funny thing. I don't know how they name their Moss paints. Moss Rose. So it's almost like Great it acts as Michael. cloud. Come up with the name Moss. Moss Rose. Rose. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little bit more blue purple on this side. Now I'm not gonna go across the entire landscape here because what you have to remember with skies and mountains are skies are independent from the mountain typography. So it fades on its own. It has nothing to do with the outline of the mountain. So because it's lower on this side, I'm gonna see more of the sky transition on this side. I wouldn't see that over here because the mountain is covering it. 
if I outline my whole mountain with that blue, then it kind of kills that, uh, that illusion that the sky is separate from the mountains by itself. So now I have like a little soft blue purple in there. And if you want to do a little bit more blue, you can just kind of right here at the bottom, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to like adjust this a little bit. This might be way off topic, but I feel like one time I saw someone use like a white crayon and kind of do light lines for their sky and it made it look kind of like wispy clouds. Have a you ever done that? white crayon? Yeah, like a clear. In crayon. watercolor? Yeah, beforehand. They kind of just like did line of crayon. I don't think I've ever seen that, but I don't know, like. We have to try it. We gotta try it. We gotta try it. Yeah. I watch a lot of children's programming with my kids. <laughs> I'm gonna Stay try it, that's a. What color blue? Norway blue. Norway blue. Norway blue is the blue we have. Okay, so here's my sky for my first postcard. I'm not going to put in my mountain yet because we want our sky to be totally dry before we put in our mountain. So this one, I'm going to put off to the side while it dries and then I'm going to start this other one. Okay, I'm ready. Now I'm onto this one. This is like the same exact thing except opposite. We're starting with blue first and then we mix our purple, pink, and then orange and yellow. So I'm going to start with my Norway blue. I am going to add a tiny, tiny bit of black in there. So it's a darker color, like richer, stormy, stormy, <laughs> deep, moody, all of those things brooding. brooding. And then I'm going to start putting my blue in first. And then I'm going to get my paintbrush wet and just blend this out. Now I'm not gonna go all the way down to the bottom this time because um, the yellow is a really light color and it's really transparent. So if I did blue all the way down, you would see it behind that yellow where we added in. So I'm only gonna go down maybe an inch and a half. But now I'm gonna add some purple. So kind of at the bottom where that ended, that wash ended, I put in my purple and I'm going to blend up. Just swiping back and forth with my round 10. And if you, and if you do this and you're like, man, that's looking good, but I want my sky to be darker. You can do, you can totally do another wash. I'll do another one right here. Jamie says, uh, her kids can draw hidden pictures with the white crayon. That she paints, and then they can find it in there. It's like a resist. Oh yeah, so it almost acts like um, like masking fluid, maybe. Is that yeah. like? Is that what it? That's what I'm saying. We gotta yeah, try. we gotta try it. I'm really excited to try it, actually. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit stronger purple in here. Blend that down a little, and then I'm gonna put in my moss. How are you doing? Mm, mixed. No, you're doing good. Okay. Just keep blending it up. I just keep needing that confidence boost from you. I'm, I'm right. here. I'm your cheerleader. All right. You got me. We're going to watch you blend, Michael. Here it goes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Am I mm -hmm. doing it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was born to blend. What I would do is I would take another swoosh up here with a blue again to make it a little bit darker. Can I like drag this one down instead? Uh, I would just pick up some more. Mm-hmm. 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 Look at that. It's going to be a drinking game before. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I added my pink. I'm moving it across. I don't want to go up too much into my blue because we still want to keep some of that blue pure. Which one did you grab? The Moss. Up here? Moss. Yes, yes, yes. Or here. They're the same color. Oh. This one's so much more red than that one. I know, right? It's just because there's more of it. Oh, gotcha. And this is just pure you're going on with? You're not mixing it with anything? Correct. All right. Trusting you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to put in some orange.
here. And now I'm gonna put in my yellow. I didn't leave a ton of room for my yellow, but let's see. There we go. Now remember, I'm not gonna go yellow on top of the entire thing because it's, it's the same idea, which is because the mountain is covering that sky, you're not gonna see that much yellow. You're just gonna see a little bit. Just like that. Where's the, this yellow up here? Uh-huh. And then if you wanna do like clouds, which is kind of what I put in here, Right, this is kind of the idea as if they're like swooshing clouds. You just get like a little bit stronger, darker color. You can use the moss rose, maybe mix with a little bit of orange. And you're gonna kind of just do, while it's still wet, you're gonna kind of just like go across here and do little lines. And it's gonna bleed a little bit out on its own. That's okay, I feel like it, it gives it like that wispy cloud um, kind of idea. Like that. And it's never too late to go back and blend some more. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, I have a really strong kind of pink purple line right here that I kind of want to blend out. So I'm just going to take my damp, my brush, I'm going to clean it. And then I'm going to um, kind of pat it on my paper towel so it's just damp. And then I'm going to kind of move this color up a little bit, blend this line out so it's not super strong. Keep going. And then if you need to reintroduce some pink in there, if you lose it from blending, go for it. There, so it's a smoother. Ooh, look at those. Moody. Moody. Yeah. Colorful. Can we check in? Love it. In? Yeah, That's let's nice. look. Do you want me to just move their thing no. to? Okay. He's a professional. We good? Okay, so here is Michael's. He put some clouds in up here. I would maybe blend this area out a little bit more, like here and here. Okay. And is this a cloud right here too? Uh -huh. Okay. What I would maybe do is I, with clouds, we want them to be darker on a sunset. So in the day, clouds are white, they're bright. But actually, as the sun goes down, the clouds actually become dark. So I would blend this out and maybe do a purple cloud right here or something because this okay. moss rose is really bright okay. and it's fighting with the brightness of that. Gotcha. Okay, so blend that out, do a purple cloud. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. So it's like bleeding on the edges, like how do I, is that supposed to do that? Yeah, so, okay, so this is. a lot more pink than you do. This is Bradley's. We have some strong pink here. So if you don't like that, what you can do is you can take a damp brush and try and like blend it out a little bit so it's not super Will that strong. Like ruin it? it won't ruin it. Um, but it it won't have this like nice so if this is acting as a cloud and you mm -hmm. want it to stay separate, then you wouldn't do that. Okay. If you want it to blend more in with the sky, then you would go ahead and try and blend it out a little bit. Now the reason why it's bleeding on the edges here is because um, it was wet when you mm -hmm. put the paint in. Is it not supposed to be wet? No, it's okay because like if you look at mine here, mine is bleeding on the edges too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's okay. And honestly, like if you're doing skies and clouds, usually you want to put them in while it's wet because mm -hmm. we want that soft transition. Yeah. Um, but if you don't like it, you want to soften it up, then you go ahead and take your paintbrush and you blend it out. So I feel like this pink spot right here is like so, so different from that. So what I, the only thing that I think is really missing from your painting is I'm not seeing like a purple area, right? It goes yellow yeah, and then orange. We, yeah, we want to put in some purple there. Okay. So I'm just going to take my brush, pick up some purple, I'm kind of in between the blue and that orange. I'm going to start doing a okay. light purple wash here. And I'm just going to go over mm -hmm. this pink area. It's like turning brown there. When it mixes with the orange, it might turn a little bit of a different color, which is why we're not going to mix all the way up. Mm -hmm. But it's okay in some areas if it gets a little muddy. See on mine how it kind of got muddy yeah. right there? That's okay. Now this is not gonna blend all the way out because it kind of dried on mm -hmm. your paper, but we can kind of add to it some stronger colors so it's not sticking out so much. So like if you put like um, the wet paint like on the edges of this, it's not like 
Is it going to stay like outlined? There is still going to be a strong outline here because it dried so long. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, what I would do is probably darken up this blue here a little bit. So okay. I did like a darker blue and then just kind of blend that out like that. And I would leave this kind of as like a cloud mm -hmm. going in right there. Okay. But it looks really good. This, this yellow is nice and yeah, bright. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. How are you doing over there? Um, I'm doing good. Good. Okay. So we have our two different skies going on here. And um, I'm going to introduce one more little kind of pinkish area over here. If you want your lines to be sharper, like see how I'm putting these in and they're not bleeding out yet or at all, it's because my, my paper is more dry. So if you like these kind of more sharp, um, like just brush strokes that, are, that can be like wispier clouds, then you just wanna make sure that your sky is more dry before you put those in. So I'm just kinda of just- So Sandra was wondering about adding other kits to her monthly box? Yes. And uh, right now, if you'd like to order that and not be charged shipping, you just order and email us. Yes. Soon we'll let you be able to do it automatically. Yeah, we're figuring out a way where you can just add stuff to your box and there's no extra charge for shipping or anything. Uh, we haven't nailed that down just yet. So if you wanna add stuff to your box before we mail it out, just go ahead and order it and then send us a message just being like, hey, can you put this in my monthly box? And we will do that for you. And if it charges you shipping, like if you're just doing one kit and it charges you shipping, we'll just refund your shipping. Yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> sure. That's what we're doing. Okay. I'm going to put that aside to dry. Now I'm going back to my first one. And I'm going to do my mountains. Okay. So. Same, same brush? Same brush. I'm using a larger, I'm using around 10 for this just because it's like easier to cover a larger area. But if you have around six, that would work just fine. And you might want to wait just a second for this to dry. That's a good idea. So the mountains, we want them to be sharp. We don't want them to bleed into the sky because we want it to be clear that they're separate and in front of them. So you want to make sure that your sky is totally dry before you put it in. Hi. Hey. Okay. So I'm going to mix my Norway with a little bit of black. So it's like this dark blue color. And then I'm just gonna go across, and it's okay if you go a little bit over your sky, since it's a darker color, it's gonna cover up that. And if anything, it's probably a good idea to go over it than leave any white areas. So I'm just gonna kind of make my way across my mountain using this darker blue. And then I just rinse my brush, not totally, just kind of get it wet. That is such a good color blue. Isn't it so good? I love this color. And just kind of like blend these out. Just like that. And then if you want to do another layer, if you want to like darken it up a little bit more, you can. So now we have this nice, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of height on this side because I don't like that it's like a straight line all the way across. But you guys get to choose what your mountains look like. This is your painting. Okay, there's my mountain. I'm gonna wait to put in my trees um, because it has to be dry. So. If my other one is also dry, we'll put in the mountain on that one and then we'll practice our trees. What do you do, what do, you do with the white gap there? The very bottom. Here? The yeah. bottom. Oh, at the very bottom or at, by no, the sky? Between the mountain and the sky. Oh. So there is a slight little white gap right here. I'm gonna leave it. I'll probably actually end up just putting a tree there. It's, like a, it's almost like the, the light is red. It's almost like the sun is so bright that it's white. Um, but it's not distracting me enough. Uh, I think it's fine. If it's bothering you so much, just make your mountains bigger. Just make them taller and you can kind of cover that area with your mountains. I'll probably just put a tree there. If it bothers you that much, remember your oath. 
What do you say? <laughs> what did you I just I need a mic everywhere I go. I love it. It's so you're having the best time. Okay. We are gonna put in our mountain on the other side because mine's dry enough. You ready? Is yours dry enough? Oh no, oh no, it's not. Okay. But I'll watch. Okay. You got a lot of colors going on. I did on purpose. Good. I like watery watercolors. Yeah, that's dry enough. Okay. So just outline the sky. Mm-hmm. Kind of yeah, you're just going to kind of grow, go across. So let me show, okay, so this is Michael's here. And he is going to end up with some super cool textures here when these dry. These are going to be super cool. And uh, we have a lot of colors, but when you do mix a lot of colors together, it, there are going to be some areas where it gets a little bit of muddy, like right here. Now I have that on my paper a little bit too, right here. So don't stress too much if that's happening to you, but just kind of be aware of when you're putting like, I'm gonna put some orange up here, or I'm gonna put some pink up here or something, and you try and blend those, then it might turn kind of brown. So that's why when we're blending, you might wanna like try and stay within a more contained area than go all the way up. You can't tell Does me to contain sense? my art. You know what, you're right. <laughs> but um, it's gonna be, there's gonna be some really interesting colors. And if you really like um, the textures of watercolor, then you do wanna kinda go crazy like that. Add in water droplets, add in drops of color you can put even put in salt, and you'll just get some super cool stuff. Okay, so for my mountains on this one, it's the same thing. I'm just taking my brush with my navy color. Yep, that looks great. And I'm just gonna kind of go across. Now, when I do my mountainscape, I'm not like drawing a line. I kind of almost like to do it um, like in, in like straight kind of sketches that kind of go down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. See how I'm like, so instead of just going like this, do, do, you know, I'm kind of like just going, making more horizontal making lines. Shelves, shelves yeah, kind of like that. And for me, I just feel like that speaks a little bit more true to how mountains are formed. Like, I feel like they're formed by layers of rock, right? We're, we're <laughs> passionate about being true to our geography. <laughs> I'm really into geology. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> and, then, uh, <laughs> and then I'm just going to take that water and spread it out. Just like that. Now, if this is reading too close to the color of your sky, which is what's happening to me right now, I'm just gonna take a little bit of black and kind of like gray it a little bit. So it's just like a, a black wash with a tiny bit of blue in it. I don't wanna do straight black because that will make it too gray. I just wanna like have the color difference a little bit stronger. like that oh man that's pretty that's looking great <laughs> it's okay to say that about your own painting oh man. oh man I love it and if you want like a stronger colored edge you can kind of go over it with a darker color but blend it out just a little bit don't if you do that strong color on the edge, you wanna like blend it a little bit so it's not like an outline. Yeah, this is cool. Let me show you Bradley's. Bradley just added another wash on here, but we're getting some interesting textures going on right here. And I think that looks really cool. It's more true to mountains. So if you wanna kinda like, you know, um, like whisk some color away, lighten it up a little bit, or add a little darkness here and there for, you know, kind of forming, Feel free to do that. I'm gonna just let mine be smooth. Okay. So both of those are drying right now. And while those are drying, I'm gonna practice, we're gonna practice trees again. Now, remember, this is your painting. Maybe you don't like trees, or maybe you would rather have like birds in the sky, or maybe somebody from Florida did palm, Florida did palm trees and those were awesome. So remember that this is yours. You don't have to follow along exactly with me. So I'm gonna put trees in one of my painting. And how I do trees is I take my two brush, I do my trunk first. Do you see that I have something under it? 
No, 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 you're fine. Okay. So I'm just gonna do my truck. It's just a vertical line. Try and make it nice and thin if you can. Oh, do you know what? You should leave that. That looks like um, trees. That looks cool. Looks okay. Really cool. Okay, Michael's sky was still a little bit wet when he did his mountains, and so it bled. But the cool thing about this texture is it looks like a forest, right? It looks like a forest skyline because we have all those like branching out little things going on over here. So I would just leave that. I don't even, like that looks super cool. If you like that effect, then let your sky be wet when you put it in. Okay, so for our pine trees here, are they pine trees? Uh, there's some kind of gymnosperm, cedar, pine. Cedar, pine, any kind of tree. I do my vertical line and then I'm gonna do dashes. Now I'm gonna show you the dashes that I do off to the side. They're kind of like this. Do, 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 do. So I'm kind of using the side of my brush. I'm not um, going right on top doing like straight lines like that. See the difference? You want to use the side of like so thick. Yeah, we want it a little bit thick. And just do them shorter. So okay. it's okay that they're thick. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to start off at the top. They're going to be... It, trees are narrow at the top and then they get wider as we go down. So I'm going to just kind of do a couple at the very top. And then my first branch, I just kind of go out. And then my second branch. So they're kind of like, um, they're kind of like in chunks, right? Because branches um, are in different areas. So we're going to go across. And then just remember, as you work your way down on these trees, your dashes are going to get a little bit bigger and your tree is going to get wider. So these trees are smaller than the ones that we did last week. So they might be a little bit easier for you to do. But just let those kind of get, kind of get wide. And it's okay if they overlap a little bit because trees do that in real life, right? Yeah, that looks good. Now for my individual branches that are going across, I kind of like it when they have this shape to them. So they're kind of like, they get narrow on the sides and then as I get in the middle, my dashes get wider and bigger. Okay. And then when I get to the other side, they get narrow again. So they're kind of like thin and then widen out and then thin again. So you want to kind of make that shape with your dashes without like outlining it. So if I'm doing my tree and I'm doing a branch in the middle, I'm going to start thin with my dashes. And then when I get in the middle, my dashes almost thicken up. They get thicker and then they get thinner on the other side. And that's just because we're communicating that the branches are coming out and around towards us. That's why it does that. I knew it. Do it. That's what it is. Okay. So I think we're ready to put in our trees. Jump the gun. <laughs> That's okay. So, which one was I adding trees to? This one. Here's the one where I'm going to add trees to it. Now, as you can see, when I did this example here, I put in my trees, but my ground was still pretty wet that it bled out. See how my black kind of turned to blob here? Mm -hmm. When that happens, you can put a tree in on top of that and just kind of like, so if you put in a nice sharp tree kind of like on top of it to the side, then this would almost be like it's on purpose that it's farther oh, away. Yeah. So um, if that happens, don't stress out. Just wait for it to dry. You can do another tree on top of it. So I'm going to just do one kind of going over it. And then hopefully that will make it look like, oh, that tree's far away. That's why it's blurry. You know what I'm saying? Seeing these tricks that we do? I say that all the time. Say what? Oh, the tree's so far away. <laughs> hey, how are you guys so far away, tree? How? Why are you so far away, tree? Okay. 
So now that I put a sharper tree in front of it, I don't know if you'd be able to tell very well, but it just looks closer to, closer to me, that tree. So this one, my landscape is nice and dry. I'm good to put in my tree. I'm gonna start off to the side because I don't like putting things directly in the middle. It throws off composition. So, and then I'm gonna start where I have this white spot in my sky. I'm just gonna cover that. You don't have that. Yeah, so where should I start? Like yeah, I would start about right there. there. So I'm gonna put in my tree trunk first. Just like Does that. It reach above the mountain? Yes. So you want it to go above or below the mountain. You do not want the top of your tree to line up directly with the mountain line because um, we want to make it clear that it's in front of it. And when you do it directly, even with it, it throws off our eye. So we put in our tree trunk. We do our small dashes at the top, little leaves here. Then we're going to work our way down. We got some widening. Okay, and Bradley, I noticed that on yours, when you were practicing on your trees and trying to do this shape, right, mm -hmm. that I was saying, what you were doing is you were kind of filling in that shape with small dashes. Okay. And what you want to do is you actually just want the dashes themselves to get thicker in the middle. Okay. So it's like I'm doing small dashes, and then when I get in the middle, my dashes get bigger, and then they get smaller okay. again. So it's not like... So it's the same shape, but I'm not like just filling it in with the same dashes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you don't, do you start that shape at the top or just from So the I top? start on one side. So I'm not going to outline it. That outline is just for you guys to understand what the shape is. So I usually start off to the side and I start with thin dashes. And then as I get towards the middle of my tree, they're going to get wider and kind of thicker. And then they narrow off again. So, so you your branches like really spread out, is that? Yeah, I'll probably go in and kind of fill mine in a little bit more. Okay. So sometimes I like to do a couple like in between mm -hmm. so they're not so sparse. Yeah. But there are sparse trees. So I'm sure you would find a oh. silhouette of a tree. Did you, did you, <laughs> you don't believe me, Al? <laughs> sparse trees, really? Yeah, they're a thing. And then I'm just gonna kind of make my way down. So there's two, there's two ways that you can do these little like sections. You can either start in the middle and then go out to the side from there, or you can start at one side and work your way across. I don't think that there's like only one way to do it. So do whatever feels right to you. You just kind of want to make sure that the shape of your tree is a triangle so that it gets wider on its way down. I feel like this is your first time trying to teach tree branches. <laughs> Because you've done trees a number of times. We have, and it's the this same trees. Is new. It is the same trees, but let me tell you, it takes a while to to get used to it. So what you're trying trees? to say is just thicker in the middle, right? Yeah. Then, oh, all right. <laughs> in your practice tree, your branches got smaller at like the bottom. Like, are they supposed to stay big? Oh, I just didn't finish this. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I was confused. Sorry, Bradley. Sorry. 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 <laughs> So we want to keep them going all the way wide till we get, if this is the bottom of my page here, we want them to stay wide all the way down. I couldn't help but notice you left your trees unfinished. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that that's not done. That's <laughs> totally what I meant. That's great. Okay. And I'm going to do a couple trees there. I'm going to do a grouping and I like my trees to be different heights. Um, so I'm going to do like a smaller one. Oh, no. Did you rip it? Oh, no. You got to be really careful taking that tape off. <laughs> oh, and you want to wait till it's dry. I didn't know. Well, if you, I would have told you. I'm sorry. You just get so excited. <laughs> you make me feel confident with this. Okay, wait for it to dry. Sad day. No, you... Here's the thing. You can still paint that though. I don't want to. Okay. That's fine. So you've got like a, like a forest tree edge. Right? Yeah. There we go. On purpose. There we go. Thank you, Al. <laughs> it's rustic. Okay. Okay, so I should wait to pull these off because it's like, you know when like there's new plastic on something and you just want to peel it? Yeah. Okay, That's let me show you right how now. to peel it off because my, he just can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to show you. But it's worse if you do it. 
Why? I don't know. I feel like I feel like you were in the middle of teaching us trees. I was, Are you but distracted right now. I am, but I just have to show them how to do this, <laughs> or because people have asked this before. So when I peel tape off, you don't want to just like pull it up straight across. You want to like pull away from it, but gently, mm -hmm. so a little bit at a time, like that. So see that I'm going nice and slow, pulling away from it. Why can't you be more like your wife? I know, <laughs> I know. I'm gonna yank this one real fast and get the same effect. Okay. I don't know, I probably not. We'll try it. I'm scared of it. I like the uh, white border like around it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we have a clean white. So when, so if I were to go to do this one, you wanna pull it away from the paper and just do a little bit at a time. You don't wanna go that's, this way. That's exactly what I did. If you go the opposite way, it's gonna pull at that paper. That's why I ripped. All right. So you're just gonna kind of go a little here. See, look at that nice clean edge. Mm. What an edge. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. I wanna do the bottom one. Let me do the bottom okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. So you can either go this way or this way. So you're gonna start at the edge closest to the thing that's taped and pull away from it. Right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> He was like in the middle of truth. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. But maybe people are there. Maybe they're ready to. Yes. Yes. You know what? I don't hate that rough edge. I don't. Well, let's pretend I did it on purpose then. I love it. That's really what, it, what it's all about. Pretend Pretending you do things on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep going with my trees. I'm doing another tree branch here. It's shorter. And do little dashes at the top. So is my paint too wet? Because I feel like it's just all a big blob. I don't think your paint is too wet. Let's no, see here. No, I put like too much water. No, I know what you're saying. Okay. It was, no, it was good. Okay. Um, let me see. No, it's not too wet. I would just say that like, when you're doing these narrow tops here, you want to be like very gentle with them. Okay. And you, you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of white space in between your dashes. So you see on your trees here how you did do dashes and they have that shape, which is great, mm -hmm. but there's actually not a lot of space in between them. If, you're, if we're looking at the trees here, see how there's almost little yeah. gaps in between mine? We kind of want to keep that idea because we're trying to imitate small leaves okay. or whatever is on the tree needles. and what Sorry, needles needles thank you and light still gets in in between there and that's what we're trying to communicate okay. that there's space in between there so when you do your dashes let there be a little bit of space in between them okay. and then that's going to make it we want to let some light in through our trees okay so i'm just kind of making these dashes across leaving some white space And I do sometimes kind of like almost a hash mark. Do you guys know what Is that hash mark, hash, hash marks? Yeah, that's when you like go across like that. So it's okay to kind of layer them a little bit. I feel like the mistake parts of the paintings end up being my favorite, like, like the white spot. Now oh, I love it. Yeah. You know? you know what? I agree with you. Okay, and I'm gonna do a couple more trees on this one. How are your guys? How are you guys doing out there? How are your trees? Any questions? Maybe you didn't do trees. Maybe I should do birds in one. This question is for you, America. How are your trees? <laughs> yeah, birds would be good. Yeah, like that. Okay, and I'm gonna do slightly taller, but not the same exact. Just gonna kind of go across with my dashes. Effortless trees, it's hurting my soul. <laughs> but I'm not comparing. You're not comparing. Or being down on myself. Do you know what? Hey, what do you think about putting a bird in yours? In mine? I say we do it. What kind of bird, Al? I don't, I don't know anymore. I only know one kind of bird in art, and it's the... The V. The V. The V bird. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to do some, some birds too. I'll wait for Sarah. I'm getting a bird. Don't Another taller trees, Sarah. Those are so small. Those are babies. I like them small. This is my painting. 
Owl. <laughs> you can put big trees in your thing. <laughs> You can do them bigger if you want. I think what I actually yeah, might do. Says the bark beetle has been eating her trees. <laughs> the what? The bark beetle. The bark beetle. <laughs> Wait, in real life? Because that's sad. Wait, is that a real but thing? If you're talking about your painting. That's funny. I'm going to do a few more trees in mine. Maybe I'll have it go all the way to my edge. Now, if you notice, this paper is actually a little bit um, like it absorbs the paint and water a little bit more than the Canson paper that we usually use. So sometimes you just have to use more paint with that. I don't know if you noticed it. I did a little, okay. Okay, so I'll put some birds in on this one. So when you're doing birds, right, this is like the standard distant bird that we see. Right? Mm -hmm. Which it's okay to do a couple of those, right? Duh. But also you have to think of like the shape of a bird and the different movements it's taking during flight. So we can do a couple of these V's, but then also some of them might just be like a wing and a little body. You see oh, that? Yeah. So it's like some of them are gonna be like they're gonna be at different angles and all of- How many of birds do you know with one wing? <laughs> okay, the reason why, the reason why it looks like it's one wing, owl, is because if you're looking at a bird from the side and both of the wings are up, you're only gonna see one wing because the other wing is being covered by the first wing. Get it? That question's towards you, Al. <laughs> <laughs> I still think when you've got a bird with one wing, he ain't flying that high. I'm telling you, there is another wing. It's just behind the bird. He's just barrel rolls. <laughs> He's just doing this. He's fine. He's fine. His nickname is Corkscrew. <laughs> so do that. And then also when you're doing your like these, I'm going to have them be a little bit small. I'm not going to have like big old birds. They're going to be nice and tiny because they're going to be far away. And sometimes one side is gonna be thicker than the other just because of the angle of the wing that you're seeing. So you see how this side is thick and this one is thin? Mm -hmm. so they're not gonna be like perfectly like this, all of them. One or two can be like that, but we, you have to remember when you're doing groupings of things, you want there to be um, some difference between them. Because if they're all the same, then they're gonna look kind of funky because birds aren't totally aligned, like five of them at the same time, you know? There's gonna be. Wait till you do bird yeah. layers first. You'll never okay. see birds flying in like a formation or anything. I mean their <laughs> wings. That's crazy talk. I mean their wings all at the same time. You never see them. No, you never see them. You know what, Al? That's okay. This this whole business venture <laughs> will end with my untimely death. <laughs> oh, be, Al, who? I'm it'll sorry. It'll be a real crime story. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect ending. Okay. Yeah. Like how many birds should you do? Are we talking like a thousand birds? How, just... However many you want. It's... Because those are so small, I would do more. Yeah. But that's, it's your painting, my love. Okay. I like those it's clouds. Not a comment on the size Thank of you. Birds, so I'm gonna do some my birds, birds kind of coming up over here. So I'm gonna do a couple V's. And it's okay if your V's aren't like totally symmetrical, okay? because the wingspan is kind of weird. So they're in different lines. And then now I'm gonna do one of my single winged birds. Oh, corkscrew. Al. <laughs> oh, windy. <laughs> and then I'll do, I'm gonna do like one farther away over here. So it's like, they're moving. I'm doing some upside down Vs. Yeah? Yeah, because they flap down too, you know? They do flap down. That's smart. Good Thank job. Thank you, biology degree. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, <laughs> I'll do an upside down V too. Okay. Do they kind of look like bats a little bit? That's okay. Yeah. Michael, yours represents the font wingdings. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's where I take my inspiration. <laughs> Okay, so I got some, I got a sunset with some birds. I got a sunset with some trees. You can have both. You yeah, can have, have 
One. You can have neither. You can do any kind of silhouette you want. This is your painting. But no matter what you do, please send it in. Please write a message on the back, you know, just saying that we're thinking about you and we hope this brings you happiness and all of that stuff. If you sign up for an email, I included um, a link to the blog that Missy writes where she just kind of talks about her experience. You're free to check that out if you want to learn more about her family and what they're going through. Should we like show everybody? Yeah. Okay. Wait, do you want to untape yours? That's a good idea. Slowly. Okay. Yeah. No, I want it ripped on the end. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yes. See, gentle and slow is the way to go. <laughs> Mine's got a nice easel built in. It does. Honey, I love how your sky turned out. Thank you. Happy accidents. It's really what painting is, you know? Good job. We're all, <laughs> we're all like, <laughs> we're all like, yes, Don't take that. Rip. I'm going to do this side. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do this side. My birds are still super wet. That's okay. They should. You paint an elephant next to a cow? Okay. Ooh, I love that edge. I do really like that. Okay. Should we hold them up or are you going to? Hold them up. Okay. Well, to that, honey. Gosh. Okay. Okay. We'll start with Michael's. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Look at them. They look great. Bradley, you got yeah, such a nice that one's so no, good. It's not dripping. I look how clean pink. her edge and her yeah, nice really pink like and that strong yellow at the top. Yes. Yes. They look so oh, good. Good job. Woo! Let's clap. Beautiful, beautiful work. What's the family's name? The Wood family. Thinking of you, Wood family. Wood family, we're thinking of you. We love you. We're so sorry. And hopefully these kind of make your day a little bit. So they should be stamped. They should be addressed. Put them in the mail. Take a picture of them. Post it on our Facebook. We want to see. We want to love it. Al, it looks like you're ready to say something. You have that mic ready. I'm always ready to say something. <laughs> just He's like, just hold it. I'm ready to go. Okay, next week. You guys ready to see? The elephant. Ooh, I'll add it. Ooh, Ooh ah. ah. Wow. I know you guys are excited Ooh. about Did you rainbify that elephant? I rainbified it. The tutorial for this is being released tomorrow. We're painting this live next Tuesday. Same time. We'll be here. I can't wait to teach this one. I feel like everyone's super excited about this one. So it's going to be super fun. Um, if you paint with us, share it on Instagram, tag us in it. Our Instagram name is let's go make art. Um, we love you guys. We think you're awesome. Thank you so much for doing this postcard. I think it's such a cool gift that we can give back to people and just show that art can be so much more than just pretty pictures. We can actually make somebody feel comforted and feel good. So let's do that. I think that's all I got to say, right? That's it. That's it. All right. Good job.